problem. That's no problem at all, man. Okay, so let's get this party started. All right, good evening, everyone. My name is Justin Scott from 876 Invest, and I'm here today with a special interview session for you guys, right? With the illustrious, the, 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 the UCA team, University and College Ambassadors. All the execs meeting here for a group interview, never been seen before, at least I hope never been seen before, right? Because I want the exclusives. <laughs> you know but um here we are here today um with all of the execs from the ogs and they're here to tell their story about how uca became uca all the additions they would have been adding and to really just give us some insight into how a company that would be operating and how they would have moved on from there since so probably best if all the guys introduce yourselves um starting with mr christopherson Nunes himself mr purple crow chris you know so but I i'm chris man. um so i the, the founder co-founder of you say so some of these crazy people be on the ride um yeah i don't know what this is to be honest <laughs> all right gabby hi my name is gabrielle Waits. uh i am the founder of gabby glam co uh gabby glam Cosmetics, Carnival, Glam Hub, and Glam Con. And I'm also a marketer. All right. Let me name then. All right, share. You know, Introduce yourself, please. Uh, I'm Shereen Marshall. And in the future, God's willing, I joke. I'm, <laughs> I'm Shereen. <laughs> I'm Shereen. I'm a company developer. So you're fine. And, and your local event marketer and production person. Okay, excellent. Um, Dad he is chipping in and out. I right, meanwhile, Swaby, introduce yourself to the people, please. It's the influential. <laughs> Hi guys, so I'm Swaby. I'm digital marketer and data analyst. Currently, one of my many apps. Pleasure to be here. Okay, great, great, Alexia. Hi, everybody. So I'm Alexia James, digital marketing manager. Um, and yeah, so we'll be sort of aware of many hats. Um, of course, we could get into that multifacetedness that I think we all learned from being a part of <laughs> this group. Um, but yeah. <laughs> OK, OK, that's great. Um... Dad seems to be having a little bit of technical difficulties from where he's at. Jump out and um and, and exit and jumping back. But we can get back to him in a quite a second, you know, because show must go on. All right, so great. So so far we have almost everyone establishing themselves, you know, introducing themselves who they are. And as I would have told you, they're all very multifaceted people, right? They all come from different backgrounds in terms of what I would have been studying. Um, they're all, however, in the experience that everyone knows, they've all would have been, you know, great introduced to marketing and event planning based on, you know, the type of events that would have been dealing with managing people and organizing themselves. So can we just get a little background into how UCA started? You know, anyone can come up. Just, just tell us how the whole initiative started. Um, so, for example, it started with me linking to every one away, telling about this idea. I saw Sherry walking the street and a little girl one away. Alexia DM her on Twitter, she ignored me to keep a link her a different way. Keep a link, Gabby, and it became a whole connecting of dots of some sort in terms of value added. Um, and it became, I just evolved into different things over time, really, you know, from ambassadors to doing events to supplying people with content content so creating campaigns so anything so so alexa going to denmark so we getting lost in new york so different things um but just it was like a, a experience to say the least <laughs> that's an understatement that is definitely an understatement because i would have been hearing from Cuba about like you know you guys had some some troubles out in trinidad um getting lost in new york denmark so it's not just Jamaica any at all, right? Because to my understanding, yeah, it would have started out in Jamaica. You guys 
majority would have been here, you students at the time or around you at the time, but then it just really grew out into this big international thing, right? They call it so. <laughs> All right. Okay. Okay. So, um, let me just get some experiences there. So, like, share. What's the first project that you would have been a part of for you, sir? And like, what's your experience like there? Uh, my first first project, and I think everybody read this project: Women in Energy, the JPS event at Pegasus. I was. It was. It was so much fun. Like it was really fun. But you know, it was like the funnest part getting paid after because we were just ushers we we're just like people in black we just had to mingle with people and talk them up and you know do a little bit of you know this is the way to your seat ma'am and it paid so much money and i was just like uh-uh <laughs> <laughs> i me and Sylvie was doing the payment of ambassadors and they were shook because the more days you work the more money got paid we were shook and i think that was the first experience that to like get a taste of UCA because it was fun. Like everybody was showing up, you know, Gabrielle was there looking all boss in her full and outfit and everything. So it was there trying to like do shift system. Okay, you sleep from 10 to 11 and then get lunch and then um, control this section over here. But it was really, it was really good. It was like my first UCA event and it was so successful. Okay, great. Sabi, so, you call your name. What was your experience like? No, it would have been it would have been my first experience with UC as well for sure, and it was just so interesting because of course you're within the college space trying to earn some money on this side and to be presented with this opportunity to not just earn some money but have so much fun while doing it. So it would have been one of the first times. I think there was at least fifty of us as students on that production or on that project, and it was just such a fun time, you know. Even though we're all working and doing a show and said, oh, here's your seat, ma'am, hold this door, wait, 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 like, because they put all of us together into one space, you know, whenever we come together, it's just vibes. So it was a beautiful experience. That's why I was laughing when Sharon mentioned it, because I was like, wow, it was like so long ago, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Funny enough, I, I believe I was actually there at the time. Um, Like, I got, I got, I was, no, I was only there for that one as, as an usher. And oh, hold on, that just followed back. Right, I was only there as an usher at that time, but it was really interesting because I was working there with a lot of my peers, a lot of my friends, and it was an interesting experience to just be like, okay, so I'm here. There are a lot of these corporate people doing them thing. They're, they're presenting, they're talking about this. I didn't really have much experience in a setting like that, but to be able to go there and just have some fun, my friends, and get paid after, that was really interesting for me. Yeah, man. Uh, Gabby, what was your first experience? Uh, yeah, my first experience, uh, actually, I started off as an ambassador being, it was uh, being a model uh, for Wedding Spectacular. That was actually the first time I got I think, to, do, to be a model. Um, first time I wore a wedding dress. It was a whole experience and I really enjoyed it and loved it. Um, and from there on out, oh, that was when a lot of opportunities came at me. And that was actually when, um, uh, it was after that Chris had actually asked me to be an, an executive and be actually a part of what was your first experience with you, sir? Um, so mine was a little different because I didn't come in as an ambassador because I would have well, I'm from Trinidad, first thing. Uh, so I would have been at UE, um, and it would have been a case from like my first day. I just knew that I wanted to be just like experienced more in terms of marketing. So I've actually been at Red Bull first, like Red Bull Jamaican work for them. So that was like super interesting because that's really where I got my first immersion on just in terms of international brand marketing and work with brand teams. Um, because for Jamaica with Red Bull, you work with the Latin team, which is the Latin America team and all those different things. Um, and then as Chris mentioned, he would have come to me and I'm like, what cool is this boy telling me about like <laughs> 20 grand compensation to say, so, you know, my currency stay like, no, and then, um, like, wow, not the currency shaming. <laughs> these are facts though. Um, and then later on, I would have been working with M7 events, um, in terms of just assisting them 
producer marketing and overall event planning. Um, and the person who shall not be named was their sponsorship manager at the time. Um, and, you know, there's those people sometimes when they see you and they hear you speak, they just attract you in terms of your knowledge you think you're offering. Um, and he saw that my skills are really being utilized adequately on the M7 team and then he told me about his thing um and just the overall way how he presented it to me because I really just wanted to learn and grow more like that's just how I am as a person um and then I was like okay cool and I would have come on as working with their company and their entity and then also work with UC in terms of as an executive member um and that's really like how it all came together for me in terms of like experiencing that and I got to meet so many different people. Um, Cause people are always like, how do you know all these people? And it really came from like my experience with UC as well and with person who shall not be named. Um, in terms of just like, all the interfaces like people from different spectrums of industries in Jamaica. Um, and of course, Chris was talking about New York and meeting people over there. And really just like expanded my overall network. Um, and of course, being in UE, well, I was in Sosai, so, you know, had a lot of time <laughs> just in terms of courses. So it was easy for me to like maneuver everything I was doing and still balance school because I still completed my degree and all those different things like in the careers, all that. Um, so it really was just like a completely immersive experience. Um, and even when you look at like Gabby and stuff like that, we were able to just do so much. Um, and I think the entire team just got like, uh, we say baptism by fail in so many different things, which is why I think in our current rules now, any things that we're doing, nothing is really intimidating because like being 20, 21 um, and having to just have huge things on your back and you had no idea how to do them, but you just had to like figure it out. Um, it really just helped with your overall decision making um, and being able to adapt and pivot um, and I think those are the most important skills. Like I know a lot of times people talk about all these different things, but those basic core skills are really things you could just adapt to any single job, any single industry. Um, even if you look at COVID, like pivoting and adapting has been the main things that all businesses and industries have had to do. Um, so those are skills that are just indispensable. Um, and I think we all learned um, during our time there, so yeah. I mean, exactly, because I can imagine being like in your early 20s, managing huge events, managing people, for example, managing people in your peer group and trying to organize them all to say, OK, I need you guys here and you guys to be doing this and you guys to be operating like this, right? While still working in conjunction with actual companies who would have hired you guys, you know, so that's that's really crazy to me. That remind me one of some of the ambassadors went straight to our clients and demand their money. <laughs> oh yeah i can imagine man like some of these big companies just looking at you university kids coming up to the man and say okay cool so we're going to need Trouble. x amount of money for, for a job like this right and they're looking at it like huh you know definitely some unforgettable moments i'm not gonna lie like what alex said is 100 percent true like in our current roles now with anything that we're doing like you see a problem arise, you know, like a fire needs to pick up somewhere and everybody's running around, everybody's all crazy, everybody's like in distress, and you're just there like, like this is the softest right. form of problem. Right. 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 Bro, chill. Chill, <laughs> like you have not experienced hardship until you're on early <laughs> at 5 a.m. in the morning during setup and using a car. Yeah, so always the old time <laughs> Right? You bring some hurricane season too. Like you don't know like my maybe needs to talk about him climbing scaffolding <laughs> yeah that was that was a crazy one for sure no but it's yeah. just being exposed to so much things like i'm sure none of us before going or joining uc would have imagined that we would have been exposed to the things that we were exposed to like absolutely nothing could have prepared us for those experiences, you know, but it's such a beautiful thing having gone through them because now we are in such a better place. As Sher says, nothing can phase us with the different roles that we're assuming now. It's just like, it's no big deal. Everyone around us is like headless chickens and we're just attacking it, executing Yeah, I think that was, it seemed like a boot camp for, for life and 
and just for, you know, be in that working environment. Can you guys hear me now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. <laughs> oh, but I heard this from the same American outfit. But dope, I'll flow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, because I, I don't think you guys would have had like an experience to be have the opportunity before you say to have such like diverse experience within short space of time. I can imagine you guys have been working like dozens of projects over your short space of time, right? Not at all. Not at all. We were regular students. I was going to university parties and just going to class and everything. And then Chris came to me about you say, I'm just like, I can't be a walk. I'm not I don't know anything about your I don't know this I can't help you. I can't help you. But it's a learning experience. And I think um the best thing about UCA it was actually real. I met some real people as you can see. Um it's just like crazy that like years after after everything, because don't feel like every day was like really great for us. As close as we are, we fought a lot. <laughs> like we fought so much, like it got super ugly. Like people were in malice, people are delete conversations, people are leave groups. Like it got really ugly, but I wouldn't trade any of it and I would it like the experience or anything. Because it was real, like you're going to fight and caught you in the real world. Yeah. You're not gonna see eye with people that you work with and you don't have to be friends with people that you work with. But if you have a common goal and you work together and you understand yourself, then it's fine. Yeah, man, guys, I think really for the real world out there. Oh yeah, we definitely did. And I think, yeah, I always say this. I always say that, like, UCA is. I don't know if you guys heard me in the intro, but I was saying that you know UCA is like an extended family. You know, you have you have you you have your mother, your dad, and you have UCA. I think that this whole experience we really just started to bond, and we're just so close, and we're always there supporting each other, and we're That's always true. cheering each other on. Um, and we're always just, yeah, we're always encouraging each other for different business endeavors. And, uh, yeah, I think that we, Chris, uh, we really just created a family. And I think that is one thing that I appreciate about this whole experience, um, just being able to have an extended family. Okay, okay. I love that, man. I love that. Because I'm sure, like, you guys would have been... At times, you'd have had to think of each other as like co-workers, separate from like friends. So you kind of had to make that distinction a, a lot of the times and had that that little separation, you know? Mm. I don't think I ever knew anybody like... as a co-worker. I always told them yeah. everybody. I, like... I, I, I think back as to where I thought yeah. of you guys as my co-worker. I think that was like that. Like, like we're all professional, we, but we at the same time, we used to be like every single day. Like yeah. on and off the day, like these were the, these were the only people I saw and engaged with. Mm-hmm. So even though like we were really and it was hard, like jokes are run. Like yeah. there's just so many memories. Like maybe pack up and truck with God. Like there's so <laughs> many memories of different scenarios. Like you can't even imagine. Um, and really, yeah. like I would not trade it for anything because I feel like a lot of us would probably like at you know, like. Yeah, we're gonna do this and that, like basic things after we ended our tenure there. And it really just feels like for me, and I know for everybody else in my entire perspective in terms of what I can do, what I could do. Um even like being in rooms now, like I know for a lot of us it's not our final point or our final destination. And there's so much that we are still building and still doing what we're going to do in terms of trajectory. So yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man, I'm actually glad they touched on that right now because I'm sure a lot of the people are wondering what you guys are up to at the moment. Like, since since after you say, what would you have transitioned into? Right. <laughs> yeah, man, yeah, man. Oh, hold on. That's still in the stream. But yeah, so like, um... All right, so let me start with Gabby then, you know? Miss, 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 oh, right. So come on, tell them a little bit more right, about what? the business. Am, I, right am now. I good now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. My, what, the audio is so far. It's in and out, right? Right. Um, 
Wow, and Gabby froze, right? As I asked the question. Okay. <laughs> My wife has this one, yes. And I don't know that. Um, for me right now, I do freelance. Like, I'm 100% full time freelance. Like, I don't have a 9 to 5. I do a lot of production and I do a lot of campaign development that leads to more production and a lot of creative business development. So, it's either extremely corporate or extremely not corporate. So I do a lot of that. So it's a lot of onset, a lot of coming down, a lot of digital marketing, a lot of meetings, a lot of Zoom calls, all these different kinds of things. But I keep it interesting to keep it different. So that's what I'm doing. Okay. 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 All right. Um Free Fox, Gabby, you know, Free Fox, sorry. I'm I didn't free to... <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Okay, let me try and talk fast. Okay, what was the question? Because I wasn't really hearing All right. you. <laughs> That's so I would say that I'm sure the people are want to hear about you and what you're currently doing right now and how you would have started from UC to transition to, um, to being where you are today. Okay. Um, so currently, right now, I am working on having Carnival Glam Hub in Miami, as well as expanding the cosmetic line. Uh, how I got started from that from UCA, um, they had put out a Christmas searching for makeup artists, and with my experience in makeup artistry that I learned from my mom, I had applied for that and suggested that I would do it, and after doing it and started just doing a lot more makeup jobs for UC, I decided to take it on and just um, make it a, a business and a brand. And from there on out, I launched my Gabby Gum co page and started that this makeup artistry and then created different events from that. Um, because I did, I studied marketing, I was obviously involved in marketing at UC. <laughs> Run him waving. Big boss reach. Big boss reach. <laughs> guys, yo, yo. I don't know if you guys realize we have a celebrity here right now, you know. This is the celebrity right now. Nobody else on there if all the money goes to LC. Yeah, man, views views just shut up like this. Um, yeah, but, uh, yeah, so basically that's how you say kind of, uh, push me into the direction I am today in terms of that was how I was able to recognize my talents of, and wanting to do makeup artistry, but also exposing me to the marketing world and making me love marketing. And now that is also what I do. And by merging marketing with, uh, my knowledge in the beauty industry, that was how I was able to form kind of a glam hub and glam con. And then eventually uh, grow into having my cosmetic line, which I launched this year, early this year. Yeah. That is amazing, man. That is, that is definitely amazing. So like you would have just had Elsie, time. stop it oh. for me. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you know you reach. <laughs> So, like, what what are the kind of steps you would have to take to register um Carnival Glam Hub out in Miami? Like, to, to register it in a different country entirely? Would you be there running it um full time? Is it somewhere that you have to speak with somebody else? Like, what's the case there? Uh, with being in the different uh region, oh, in the different countries. So right. essentially, we will partner with persons who are there who are already in that industry and who would want to have Carnival Glam Hub there as well. And they will really just kind of guide and direct us into understanding the culture there and what is it that their revelers would actually want. Um, because obviously we need persons on the ground in that country because uh, I'm in Jamaica. So I can't obviously let everything from where I am. So we obviously have a team at the different uh, countries that we are going to be doing the hub. And and they would be doing the majority of the groundwork, and we will all obviously just work on the back end and on the marketing of it all. 
So. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Good stuff. Good stuff. Um, Dad, since it seems like your connection stable, like, tell the people uh, what you're up to know, so. man, and <laughs> and um, how you would have gotten that start from you say to develop you to where you are today. Um, firstly, firstly, I had no idea of this side of uh, corporate Jamaica or corporate businesses before you see it. Um, what, what I'm doing now is I have my company, D3JP. I basically do events, execution, and decor for, you know. Hey, you can hear me? I chip it out or nothing like that? I mean, no, man, you're perfectly fine. You're perfectly fine. Oh yeah, man. So I do, I do, I do draping for events. Um, one of the, the main companies that I have been contracted with is Sun Nation, where I've done the first event I've worked on for them is Sun Nation, um, Sunrise Breakfast Party in Trinidad, and also for Glam Hub uh, with Gabby. I've been a part of GlamCon, GlamHub, and all of her events for. Actually, for her first, for her first GlamCon in Jamaica, I said to, I said to them, say, hey, I think I want, I want the more in terms of logistics. And when they said baptism by fire, they literally meant it. And they're like, all right, sort out the whole layout and the the sponsors for GlamCon and all that. I was like, what do you mean? I don't, I don't say, oh, like, assistance, what you guys do? Uh, no, I got to do it. <laughs> they say, you oh, do it by yourself. All right, cool. And it was stressing, but it was it was worth it. It was worth it. I realized, okay, I can do this. So I started to do that more often with other events and other companies. Um, and yeah. Super talented. That, by the way. Thank Amazing. You. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Just got to say. <laughs> thank you. All right. All right. So explain to them exactly the um the nature of your of your business now, then, bro. Um, I do decor, uh, execution, planning, logistics. All right, all right. So if so if 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 if, if you plan to keep something or anything at all, you can assist with so the planning or take over the planning, um, getting in, getting everything into place and so forth from start to end. I'm your guy. Exactly, man. Guys, don't be afraid to plug the businesses in so, the one. Isn't me out there if you have one big sign and thing with like the handle for the social media wall, get up and say, hey, come follow, come, come, you know, come check me out. So so for instance, I'm not I'm not sure if you saw um we pay Jamaica's um office launch last was it last week? Last, last... either last week or the week before, I think. Yeah, but, yeah, so for that launch, I I basically managed everything from the construction of the office to the setting up and finish. Yeah, so you would have had to like assemble a team or like you have a you have a steady team right now. You have like people you contact regularly and say, Hey, you guys want to be a part of this, outsource them, uh, I have, bring them in. I have one guy right now. I have one. Oh, so just so you and him. Me right now. Yeah, so firstly first first it was just me. Um, but I get to realize that you know, you can't manage everything by yourself. If I can't do that, it's like a burnout before before time. So, planning to expand soon. So, I got one guy right now. Okay, okay. Come on, sure. Because I'm sure, like, when COVID kind of ease off and we're having a lot more events, I want to, and people ready to start putting things on and having more face to face sessions, that's definitely going to be um, a big part of it, man. So it's good that he's still yeah, having the experience right now. It's still getting the work right now to can, you know, continue to build up from today. Uh, true. All right. Um, Alexia, you're up. Yeah. So I'm currently a digital marketing manager at Mystic Integrated, which is a full service creative marketing agency uh, with clients across the region. Um, so that's me during the day, um, just overseeing um, Jamaican multi-million dollar brands and their campaigns um, through the line digitally. Um, but in terms of me and what else I'm doing, um, in terms of my clients, so currently I'm working with a digital artist in terms of his overall rollout, rollout marketing, PR, going into the NFT space, 
Um, and of course, that's everything, cryptocurrency and ether and all these different things. Um, and really tapping into the market globally. Um, and of course, taking a show on the road and all these different things. So a lot of exciting things in terms of that. Um, and then getting other clients on board and pivoting full time into that. Um, so I'm really excited about that. Um, and of course, there's nobody in the Caribbean region really doing that right now. So we're building out a Caribbean NFT community and all these different things. We had a Twitter space on it recently and it was really good. So just looking forward to that and those things that we're doing. Um, and of course, working on some international partnerships um, because of course, there's so much innovation happening. Um, and a lot of times it's just about being aware and being able to connect the dots, which is of course something that we learned here as well. Um, but that's really what it is because a lot of the times people look at, especially in Jamaica, innovation is very slow um, and how people adapt is also very slow. But there's so many things happening globally that once you know about it and you're able to just do the different resources, you can literally connect your brand and connect everything to it. Um, so even in terms of the NFT space like we were talking about, like Jamaica turns 60 next year, it can literally be a something where the government creates an NFT that they drop and offer it to the diaspora to purchase. Um, because now it's a case where those things are no longer our uh, expense because it's something that is an investment because it is an investment talk, right? Um, it is an investment that's now on your balance sheet that could appreciate over time because, of course, you can flip those non-fungible tokens to be redeemable in terms of the increase in currency and all these different things. So a lot of exciting stuff, um, and I'm excited to just be able to put that out there because, of course, people don't know you exist if you don't put it out there. So that's something that was just something that was really big in terms of just like marketing. Um, and a lot of people don't realize it because there's a lot of talent locally and regionally, but because people are just kind of sitting on it, sitting on it, nobody knows that it's out there. So it's just really important to just continue to put yourself out there, even if it's not where you want it to be, you're not perfect. Um, even you doing this right now into the session and building it, even though you know you may not have all the fancy bells and whistles, it's commendable. Um, so that's really what I want to just say to the general audience is that there's way too much out there for you not to be able to pivot and do what you need to do. Um, so even just looking at digital products, like because of course Gabby has her physical products, but she also offers like classes. Um, so there's just so much to look at. Um, and I know we didn't really touch on the finance aspects of it. Um, but that's also a big just like barrier to entry for just like local businesses and regional businesses in terms of how do you receive revenue from US clients and all these different things. Like even how do you buy crypto as somebody in Jamaica or any Caribbean region? Um, so yeah, a lot of things happening. So it's just for continue to do that and to support everybody here. And yeah. yeah man. Oh, so for the people who wouldn't have been um who didn't really catch what an NFT was, could it just